Hello everyone and welcome to Super User Channel. Today we will talk about the schedules, the backbone of BIM, focusing primarily on the eye for information in BIM. In Revit, all the virtually modeled elements you see in a project are actually a visual representation of the information saved in the software database. Think of schedules as a live model, like floor plans, rather than a static list. This means that any changes you virtually make in the model are reflected in the schedule, but it also means that you can use the schedules to virtually change the model, rather than modeling it yourself. I'll explain how you can leverage this tool for your advantage in five different situations. Number one is list and quantify modeled elements. Two, adjust modeled elements, hosting level, offset, and total height. Three, changing parameters value and adding new ones inside modeled elements. Four, reduce repetitive drafting work. Five, navigating through the model to find elements. All of these points time frame are listed in the video description box, so you can skip between them if you like. So let's start. First point, list and quantify modeled elements. This point is about creating a standard schedule in Revit, such as doors, windows, and rooms schedules, which will list all these categories types and calculate its total amount in the model. You can create these schedules by clicking on View, then Schedules, then on Schedules and the Quantities. Here you can see all the categories that Rivet can put in a schedule. For demonstration, I'll choose Room Schedule. Now this list is showing all the available fields, which are simply parameters that we will select to be part of our Room Schedule. To make this easier, Think of them as the questions you can ask a room about. So the first question I'm going to ask the room is, what's your number? Then, what's your name? Also, what's your level? And finally, what's your area? Now this list represents the raw data taken from the rooms in the model. And it's only showing the data related to the fields we've chosen, which are the room name, level, and area. Now we need to analyze and sort this raw data to make it more legible and useful. Click on Edit next to Sorting and Grouping. I'll sort it by level, make it as a header, add a footer, and a blank line between each level. Then I'll go to Formatting. From there, I'll choose Area and make the schedule calculate totals to this field. I'll hide the level since we made it visible as a header. Now we have a list of all the rooms in the model, organized by level and showing the total area for each floor. Now we can re-edit this schedule as we like to represent the information we want. For example, we can change it to give us the total count and area for the bedrooms only. To do so, I'll filter by name and makes it equal to bedroom. As you can see, this produced a long list for only the bedrooms in the model. We can improve this by editing the schedule and uncheck Itemize every instance, remove the header, and then delete the number field from the schedule. Now we have a list showing the bedroom's total count and area organized by each floor. And like any other view in Revit, Schedules can be placed on sheets and its graphical appearance can be edited as we like. For example, you can resize columns, break the schedule as you like, and so on. That's it for the first point. Second point, adjust modeled elements, hosting level, offset, and total height. This is one of my favorite ways to use schedules as it helps me in reducing my modeling time. For example, in this project at the roof level, I have a parapet with unconnected height of 1000 millimeter. 
If I want to change the height of this parapet, I can manually select each parapet from the floor plan, then change its height, or I can create a schedule to do it for me. From Schedules and the Quantities dialog box, I'll choose Wall Category. Then I'll add the fields I need to know about the parapet, which are the Base Constraint, Unconnected Height, Type, and finally, Family. Then I need to filter by Base Constraint, equals Roof Level, then sort it by Unconnected Height, and lastly, uncheck Itemize Every Instance. The result is a list of all the walls that are based on the roof level. But I can easily spot the parapet walls from its height. I'll type the new height value, and that will change all of them at once. So it doesn't matter whether you make the edit in the schedule or the floor plan. But the added value of using a schedule is that it is faster to select the walls, and more accurate, as you will not forget any wall by mistake unlike the process of choosing them one by one from the floor plan. Let's do another example for this point. Say that you have a false ceiling at the ground level, with the height of 2950 mm, and due to coordination issues, the false ceiling zone was increased by 150 mm, and now you need to reduce the height of the curtain walls connected to that ceiling. Again from schedule and quantities, I'll create a wall schedule and call it Curtain Walls. This time I'll add Family, Type, Base Constraint, Top Constraint, and Top Offset. I'll filter the schedule by Base Constraint equal ground level, then sort it by Family Descending. The result is a list showing the curtain walls that start from the ground level at the top of the schedule. We can enhance this schedule even more by sorting it by type, then by top constraint, and thirdly by top offset. Lastly, uncheck itemize every instance. And for demonstration only, I'll add the count field. The result is a schedule showing us the curtain walls at the ground level, organized in groups, based on their top constraint, then based on their top offset. Now from this schedule, I can see that I have 24 curtain walls connected to the ground fault ceiling. And right here in the schedule, I'll adjust their height all at once. Note that with this schedule, you can still spot the curtain walls that you don't need to change, like the ones reaching upper levels and not connected to the ground fault ceiling. I have one last remark regarding this method that you cannot use it to change the height of the walls if they are within a group, as Revit will give you an error for changing elements outside the group environment. But I would still recommend that you make the schedule so you can make sure that all the affected curtain walls are changed without forgetting any wall by mistake. That's it for this point. Let's move to the third one changing parameters value and adding new ones inside modeled elements. While you are in the process of modeling your project, you are required to input enormous amount of data inside the modeled elements. Filling this data through schedules can significantly improve your workflow in comparison of manually selecting each element, editing it, and then input the data. For example, say you want to fill the type mark of the block walls in your project, in order to tag them on plans. This time in the wall schedule, I'll add the family, type, material structure, and type mark. Then I'll sort them by type, and uncheck itemize every instance. In this schedule, the family field is dividing the basic walls from the curtain walls, and the type field is showing the thickness of each wall, and the material structure is confirming which wall is built with a block material. And now in the type mark column, I can enter the wall tag value, based on the information given in this schedule. For example, I'll type A, B, C, and D. In this way, I made sure that all the block walls types in the project are covered and each one has its unique tag.
In Revit, schedules are not limited to the available fields that are listed inside the dialog box. At any time, you can add your own parameters. By clicking on the new parameter icon, you can create a parameter by type or instance or even a shared one. For example, I'll create a type of parameter and call it finished material. Notice that it appears immediately in the schedule we created. Now I can fill the data I want inside it. I'll write wallpaper, for example. You can even change it to a shared one if you want to tag it somewhere in the plan. Shared parameter is another powerful tool in Revit. If you want me to talk about it in a separate video, please let me know in the comments section. Now we can move to the point number four. Reduce repetitive drafting work. At this point of the video, it's clear for us that schedules are useful in speed up data entry. But I created this separate point to talk about key schedules. For example, room finishes is usually filled in Revit using key schedule. But before we start creating one, let me first frame the problem for you. This is a standard room schedule listing all the rooms in my project. Now filling the floor finish, wall finish, and ceiling finish manually inside each room is a lot of work. So what are we going to do to speed this up? Of course, a key schedule. Think of key schedule as a combination of key names that you define. And under each name is a collection of settings that are shared between multiple elements that is connected to this key name. Now in our example, which is room finish schedule, we will create key names for the spaces in the project, such as the private areas, public areas, and wet areas. However, under each name, we will put the floor finish, wall finish, and ceiling finish. Now, let's create it. From schedule and the quantities, I'll choose room category. But this time, I'll click on schedule keys. I'll call it room finish key schedule. Also, I'll change the key name to finish key. Note that the key name is already here, as it must be part of your schedule. Now, I'll add the fields I need, which are the floor finish, wall finish, and ceiling finish. Now we need to create the key names. I'll click on insert data row multiple times. I'll create three key names only, which are the private areas, public areas, and common areas. But you can create as many key names as your project requires. Now I'll fill the data under each field, such as wood, plaster and paint, and so on. Now since all the data is filled, we are done with the key schedule. I'll go back to the room schedule, and from the field dialog box, I'll add the finish key. Now as we can see, I can simply click on the finish key and choose its associate area. And accordingly, all the room finishes will be filled automatically. Notice also that if we have a unique room that is not associated with any of the key names we created, we can still fill it with the data we need and leave the key name space as none. Now, if you are following along from the previous points, you know that we can enhance this schedule even more to speed up this process. Firstly, I'll duplicate this schedule since I don't want to mess up with my room finish schedule. Now, in the new schedule, from sorting and grouping, I'll uncheck itemize every instance. And from fields, I'll remove the number field, since it's the only field that's forcing the schedule to show me each individual room. And now I can fill all the rooms types in my project in less than a minute, simply by choosing the right key name only once. And if we went back to the room finish schedule, we will see that the finishes are updated in all the related rooms. I have one last remark regarding this point which is if the rooms are within a group, you will not be able to change its key name directly from the schedule. But you will still be able to see the key name you created when you select the room. And all you need is to change it once inside the group environment and it will be reflected on the rest of the groups. Point number five, navigating it through model to find elements. This is a quick one, but I use it all the time, and you might find it useful as well. 
If you select an element in the schedule, it will be automatically highlighted in the view, which is really helpful if you need to know its exact location, like a specific door for example. But if you have only the schedule view open, you can click on highlight on model and Rivet will open a view that has this element visible in it. But sometimes the element you are looking for is not in the view range of any of your model views. And that is when I like to open the 3D view next to the schedule. Firstly, I'll select the element I'm looking for in the schedule. Then move to the 3D view and select isolate element. Then deselect it. Then check the section box. Then reset the isolation. And now I can see its exact location in the model. And that is the last point in this tutorial. I hope by now you can see the power of schedules in leveraging the Rivet model data. Before tackling any modeling task, always ask yourself, can I put it in a schedule? If the answer is yes, then you've saved a lot of time, but most importantly, you are more accurate with your modeling. That's it for today. Please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.